Okay, so we got a late night emergency alert. Breaking news on the World War III front for you tonight. A story that is developing in St. Petersburg, Russia. A sub-district in St. Petersburg is completely blacked out. 100,000 people are without power. And because there's no power, there's no power to the water pump, so the pumps can't pump water. Apparently, this is what witnesses are saying now. No power, no water for 100,000 people in St. Petersburg. Now, power outages happen, but what's more interesting is what the eyewitnesses claim happened about half an hour before this event occurred. They claim that they seen flashes in the sky and accompanied by loud explosions... And then about a half an hour later, there's conflicting reports, some say 15 minutes, some say an hour. After those explosions and flashes in the sky, there was this massive power outage in and around St. Petersburg. Now, the actual district is called Shushery, and it's centered around the Polkavo Airport. So another drone attack, because there are eyewitness claims that there was drones, multiple drones in the region that either hit or, or were intercepted. The Russian government, the MODs being very tight-lipped about this in almost every major incident, it would seem, in the past several weeks. Nonetheless, uh, this uh, looks as though it was some kind of drone strike. In the very least, it was the work of saboteurs. Power outages happen but not on this scale and intensity. Interestingly, St. Petersburg is 900 kilometers from the northernmost part of the Ukrainian border, meaning that as far as we know, Ukraine has no known drone that can travel this far. Now, we know that Starlink has basically uh, relinquished control to the U.S. government, which effectively allows that to, to be in the hands of Ukrainians. So now perhaps they're using Starlink to navigate these drones deep into Russian territory. That's another story. We know that recently they targeted the Peskov Air Base, which was 700 kilometers, which would be within the range of these drones. There's some possible explanations here. One is that Ukraine does have drone technology they haven't disclosed, which allows them to go that extra 200 kilometers. Or this was the work of saboteurs and the flashes that people seen in the sky were just uh, the result of explosions and they were boots on the ground type thing. Or these were launched from within Russia in one of the many uh, forested regions where uh, pro-Ukrainian partisans could hide. Or this was launched from the Black Sea, from, sorry, from the Baltic Sea in international waters, where Ukraine could theoretically have vessels from which they could launch these devices on. You don't need a long runway to launch these. Or, I think, is least likely would be that they came from one of the Baltic states, or even Finland, which I think is very unlikely, because that would, of course, be a direct act of war. But the fact that there are drones targeting St. Petersburg, and remember, I predicted this, I said they're going for St. Petersburg next. Peskov was a trial run. What's most concerning here, guys, is that they are systematically chipping away at Russia's capability to command and control their nuclear forces. All of these attacks on the airports, on the command and control planes that recently happened, or claimed to have happened, I should say. Ukraine claims to have taken out two Ilyushin <coughs> doomsday planes. They've also uh, made several attacks on Russian nuclear bombers, strategic bombers, uh, nuclear weapons storage facilities. All of these things are slowly grinding away Russia's ability. Not grinding away, but they're starting to make it a little bit more complicated for Russia to launch a retaliatory strike in, in such case that we, the West, launch a nuclear strike against them. Remember, we're trying to view this objectively. That means looking at it through the mind of the Russians. All of these attacks on Russia's conventional forces by Ukrainian saboteurs and these drone strikes that are now being enabled by free reign with Starlink and quite possibly long-range Taurus missile systems in the not-so-distant future are also chipping away against on their non-conventional nuclear forces. Not necessarily on the nukes themselves. More important than the nukes is the command and control systems, okay? If you take out a country's ability to launch their nukes in the first place, 
that's the same as taking out their nukes. Now, Russia has this system called Dead Hand, which as far as we know is still in operation and it would allow them if the command and control was severed to just launch everything okay they have this I, I can't remember there's another name for it but it's basically if you take us out we're taking the entire world out with us type system so they have that but this is just pushing us ever so close to nuclear war now let's talk about the flash in the sky actually before i do that i want to send a quick shout out to my man shadows out here on Twitter. Shadows posts some interesting stuff. He tracks stuff on flight radar. And this, I must say, I've never seen this before. I've never seen this before, and I don't think he has either. What we are seeing here, okay, let's just pause it. We have the usual suspect, our Northrop Grunman RQ-4B Global Hawk reconnaissance plane that is usually in and around here, and they're the ones that survey the Kerch Bridge and help the Ukrainians target. Uh, Russian critical infrastructure as well as military infrastructure. But what is crazy is this. And that, I should say, probably means that they're getting ready to do even more attacks there. We're going to see the war ramp up in incredible ways in the, in the coming days and weeks ahead. This is crazy. We're seeing an Aleutian plane, a doomsday plane, a Russian ministry for emergency situation plane. I don't know what that's about. I don't know why it's en route to this reconnaissance plane and why it's flying in what appears to be, you know, what is typically a no-fly zone, okay? Um, why it is flying so close to the sun here, I don't know. But I just thought I would share that with you guys because, you know, so many things are happening right now that are, are just insane that... Uh, we gotta we gotta just keep our eyes on this stuff right now i'm telling you right now i am very compelled to make a hasty decision in buying land because i don't think we have much time i think that if they're going to start a war they're going to do it around winter time why is it that the russians are uh, have banned exports of diesel and gasoline to stabilize their prices on the home front every country is stocking up you might think, well, Russia has a lot of oil, they have a lot of natural gas, but it's about the refining of these things, okay? If, I don't know where they do the refining, I don't know if they're uh, oil refinement into the various petrol fuels like diesel, propane, isobutane, all those things that you get from oil. I don't know if that's been compromised by all the attacks or by the sanctions. Either way, Russia has stopped exporting gas and diesel. They're still exporting oil, just not gas and diesel. You would do that if you thought that it was going to be a very challenging winter, possibly even a nuclear winter, okay? What you're seeing behind me here is the actual airport that is affected by this. So I'm very concerned that all of these attacks that we are seeing, and we're not being told the severity of this conflict, the speech with Justin Trudeau, where he, for all intents and purposes, it, it basically declared war against the Russians in his very uh, passionate speech that he gave there, which was incredibly overzealous and uh, really just uh, borderline maniacal, if you ask me. And then, of course, we have this massive blunder and gaffe in the Canadian Parliament where they all gave a standing ovation to a former SS officer, and that's mainstream news. Even the head of the Canadian opposition made a tweet about it. But this is crazy. So anyways, um, just briefly a bit more about this story because the flash in the sky, I'm sure if you guys as preppers, you're thinking what I'm thinking. You're thinking electromagnetic pulse, right? Well, let's just see what they say here. Power was cut off in St. Petersburg, Shushery District and the Polkavo Airport on the evening of September 24th. Latvia-based Russian independent news outlet Medusa citing Telegram channels reports I should also add that there's been numerous cyber attacks lately. And cyber is another way that a nuclear war could start. Because if you neutralize command and control through cyber attack first, that's the same as targeting their nuclear triad, and they would launch everything at us. Anyways, according to these Telegram channels, as well as Twitter and numerous eyewitness videos that are coming out, locals heard a loud noise and saw a bright flash there's also no water being supplied to the area. This is 100,000 people. St. Petersburg is a city of millions of people. So obviously it's not the entire city, but accidents like this don't happen. This wasn't an accident. This was obviously an attack. The Russians are being very quiet about it, okay? They, and they have been very quiet about a lot of things lately. 
They were incredibly quiet about the recent attack on the Black Sea headquarters in Sevastopol in Crimea recently. And it appears as though they're trying to do uh, damage control. They're trying to keep their population from freaking out. I think a lot of the population is getting prepared for war there. I mean, they're teaching their students how to fly drones in high school and how to do military and uh, CBRN training. Ask yourself, what are they doing here in Canada besides giving speeches and writing uh, checks that we can't cash? Like uh, the fact that we have 70,000 troops in Canada. That's not going to be able to defend Vancouver. Hell, Regina, Saskatchewan, much less the second largest landmass country in the world. We don't have any gold in our coffers, and that should be a giant red flag. Like, <clears throat> we have nothing. We have no gold. We have no military. What we do have is a prime minister who's willing to give this impassioned speech about declaring war against Russia. Um, a, a prime minister who's willing to, to enact the Emergency Powers Act when it's uh, appropriate. And I would not put a military draft past this guy. I actually wouldn't at this point. There was a time when I said, oh, maybe, you know, this is all just for show. But I don't think so anymore. I'm going to show you the speech that he gave. And I tell you, he's going to make one hell of a dictator someday. Now, on the topic of EMPs, there is the possibility that this could have been, uh, to explain the flash in the sky, I presume that was just the <clears throat> explosion. But... It's possible that there's a conventional EMP weapons being used here and that this was a statement being made by the Ukrainians and NATO that we can take out your power facilities using EMP weapons. A conventional EMP weapon can only target a small area. Okay, we're not talking about the high altitude nuclear uh, weapons that emit a electromagnetic pulse that can wi wipe out a large swath of land. Okay, send out 200,000 volts in all directions for thousands of miles. We're not talking about that. We're talking about something far more localized, which would explain the flash in the sky if they detonated one of these over a thermal power plant. Now, I'm guessing that they probably just hit the thermal power plant, and then that led to some complications, which later on led to the power being uh, cut off, because according to eyewitnesses, there was explosions, there was a flash in the sky, then some time had passed, and then the power went out. Well, that sounds like, okay, they hit the power station and they had to shut something down. That sounds like what this is. Regardless, this is very concerning, and I'm telling you, I am accelerating my search for land right now. I'm probably not going to get what I want. I'm not going to get the deal that I want with interest rates so high at this point in time, but I got to get something because I'm very, very concerned that if the bombs were to drop today, you know, we would have to have a place to go that would be a suitable, not a bug out location, because if we're talking long term nuclear war, I don't want to have to bug out. I don't have to bug out with my family into the woods. We need a place and you do too. And you need to have a plan at this point in time, especially coming into winter, what you are going to do if all hell breaks loose. And we have a video that's coming up that's addressing that very thing. What are the first things you should do if hell breaks loose? Remember, they're not going to tell us. They're currently, I mean, these people are so gone. They're cheering former SS officers in the parliament, giving them standing ovations. They're having their uh, highfalutin, decadent parties well soldiers die in the trenches they don't care about me and you they simply don't they don't have a plan we got 70,000 troops we got all these decommissioned nuclear bun bunkers across canada uh, none of which we have no emergency action plan for the entirety of our nation so you are on your own and it could just happen in the blink of an eye at this point at this stage in the game let's see what justin trudeau has to say about all this nonsense here's another video just before we talk about that, of people who are in their high-rise buildings without power, that's not a place I want to be for a prolonged period of time. Hopefully nobody's stuck in an elevator somewhere. At this point in time, I'm telling you, I am very reluctant about getting into an elevator. Call me paranoid, call me what you will. Let's hear what Justin has to say. Put that drama degree to work. Canadians know this is a question of right or wrong. Canadians know that, yes, it is incredibly hard 
for Ukraine to continue to stand against a Russian aggression. And let's be honest, it's hard for the democracies around the world who are there to support their citizens, who are investing for the future, who are challenged with a challenging economy around the world to continue to step up as Canada has with close to $9 billion in aid for Ukraine. But we will because the cost on Canadians, on our lives, on our world will be so much greater if Putin wins this war that we will and have to stand every single day until Ukraine wins this war. <laughs> you know he practiced that one. And I got to say, he's going to make a great dictator, man. He really is. I mean, this guy's young. He's got a long way to go. Um, that was flaw that was a flawless performance. Cringy, yes, but flawless. And this is the kind of speech that you hear before we go to war with the country. Biden gave a similar speech the other day at the UN. And uh, he's just so overzealous about all of this. And I could not believe this when I heard this. At first I thought, okay, this is the internet, you know, what do they know? But then a National Post started posting about how this guy right here was a uh, former SS officer, a brigadier, or not a brigadier, a gr grenadier, and uh, the SS uh, Waffen, whatever it was. And even he is like, I can't believe these people look up. <laughs> Let's rewind that for a second here. I just dated myself by saying rewind. He just sees like, why are these people cheering me on? Don't they realize I was a Nazi? And uh, yeah, so now numerous people have criticized this group thinking display and poor decision-making on the part of uh, the Canadian government. So Pierre Polyev claims that it has come out today that Justin Trudeau per personally met with and honored a veteran of the 14th Waffen Grenadier Division of the SS, a Nazi division. Liberals then arranged for this Nazi veteran to be recognized on the floor of the House of Commons during the visit of the Ukrainian president. Apparently this guy goes to a lot of Ukrainian rallies. So, you know that whole thing about Azov, Ukraine, Nazi, blah, 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 that everybody said, oh, that's just, you know, that, that's nothing. It's just minimal. Yeah, look at Zelensky, right? He Look at where he's from and his origins, blah, blah, Well, apparently there's just a little, little bit of truth to that. Uh, well, we've known that for the longest time. Let's get real. This is an appalling error in judgment. So has the Canadian government. I mean, they made documentaries on this years ago with the Canadians training the Azov Battalion. Anyways, this is an appalling error in judgment on the part of Justin Trudeau, whose personal protocol office is responsible for arranging and vetting all guests and programming for state visits. No parliamentarians other than Justin Trudeau had the opportunity to vet this individual's past before he was introduced. That's not true. Apparently some other guy now is a stooge. He's taking the fall for this. Some other no-name person is taking the blame, saying it was my fault. I should have vetted this guy. So... This is the errors that these people are making. You got a standing ovation for a former Nazi, right? And are you comfortable knowing that these people are in control of our lives? That this speech that Justin gave, which looks like a call to arms, uh, a call to, to World War III, like, are you comfortable with this this massive error that they just made. I mean, and this is something, you know, look at all of them. They're just clapping. They don't know why they're clapping. This is classic herd behavior, groupthink, conformity. And it's gonna happen again. And I'm, I'm very concerned that a lot of these people have no idea the extent of the, the situation. Um, I'm sure some of them have intelligence ties to intelligence that we don't have and access to that information that we don't have here. But I don't think many of them have really thought a lot of this stuff through, especially now that we are most definitely going to be in the crosshairs of the Russians. I mean, we already have, but uh, you know, we've had the luxury of having the Americans do a lot of the heavy, heavy lifting and the uh, anti Russo sentiment over the years. But now we are clearly smack dab in the crosshairs and it wouldn't take much for the Russians to allocate a dozen or so nukes for us as well. That would be Ottawa and Toronto and Vancouver and maybe a couple Western cities as well that are getting a little too big for their britches. So I'm telling you, man, we got to watch out. 
We got to watch out. This is not good, and I don't know what the hell is going on here. This is crazy, guys. Anyways, just a quick video for you today. I got to go. We got a lot more coming, and uh, stay tuned because we just got copious amounts of preparedness content. We got to get ready because, as you can see, our government is incredibly incompetent if they're making blunders like that. All they're good at is making very good speeches, uh, invoking the Emergency War Powers Acts and taking away all our rights and freedoms and censoring the media. Probably the best thing they're going to do is a military draft, and you know that's coming soon. Anyways, guys, got to go. Bye.